Hey folks, this is Jeff, aka 101 Bronson, back here today with the next Sergio Kabuchi movie review. We're in the quote unquote top 10 now. This is number 9 in the ranking. We, again, as a reminder, we're ranking uh, Sergio Kabuchi's spaghetti western movies in order that are ranked them from least favorite to favorite. So we've moved our way up from all the way down from number 13, and now we're here at number 9. And today's movie is Sonny and Jet. From 1972, which this is actually it might be some people would consider consider this the first Corbucci movie where it kind of goes down. I would agree, but I'd still say this is his last good one. Still, you know, his last watchable spaghetti western. This comedy elements in here as well. You know, as as all of these spaghetti westerns, you know, post Trinity sort of had. Uh, but in this one, I think it's still enjoyable, still fun, entertaining to watch. And it's balanced well with uh, the serious moments of the movie. And uh, yeah, before we get into the plot, this movie, of course, is uh, written and directed by Corbucci himself. You know, he had a hand always in writing the screenplay. Either we, he was the co-writer or he actually wrote the entire thing. Uh, but usually, he was he was a co-writer with with a bunch of other writers. Um, it stars Thomas Melian, Suzanne George. As the titular characters Sonny and Jet, uh, Susan George plays Sonny, and Thomas Melian plays Jet Trigado. And also, you have in this movie uh, the always reliable regular of Corbucci, Eduardo Foyardo, and also as the sort of the main baddie of the movie, uh, Telly Savalas, one of my favorites. I love Telly Savalas, I have a huge uh, fascination with Telly Savalas. Every time he pops up in a movie, and he is in it. Uh, it's great. Uh, I, I love seeing the guy. Um, he's one of those actors that are just, no matter what he's in, I want to see it, <laughs> you know, because he's great. You know, he, ever since I first saw him as Blofeld in Honor Majesty's Secret Service, my favorite James Bond uh, movie, I've always had a fondness for the guy, a huge fondness for Telly Savalas. You know, of course, Kojak, uh, Violent City with Charles Bronson, great Euro crime movie by Sergio Salima. Um, I love seeing the guy. And of course, the music score in this movie is by the maestro Ennio Morricone. And unlike the previous time I talked about his music for a Kobuchi movie, which was What Am I Doing in the Middle of a Revolution, this music score is a great one again. I mean, it's, it's um, I'd say great, it's a, it's a good score. It's, it's a reliable Ennio Morricone score. It's not a top five, top 10 Ennio Morricone uh, Western score, uh, but it's still a very good one in my opinion. It fits this movie. Uh, some great themes in here. I, I like the score for this one. Um, anyway, let's get into the plot. Uh, Jet Rigado, played by Thomas Melian, is a notorious bandit and outlaw uh, who is sort of a Robin Hood type of character. He uh, steals from the rich and gives to the poor. He has this Mexican village that he returns to every now and again to help the people out there. So he's sort of this Robin Hood figure. Uh, even though he's not a good-hearted uh, bandit, you know, he's still a very violent and cruel man, as most of the, so the bandits in spaghetti westerns are. You know, they are, they have some morals, but they're still, you know, very, uh, in some cases, despicable characters. And I think, you know, this, this character, it's multi-layered, but uh, in, on the surface, he looks like a very despicable character, and especially in the way he treats uh, Sonny, played by Susan George, who is this young girl, and she really wants to be an outlaw. Um, and so she uh, follows uh, Thomas Melian's character around and he reluctantly uh, teaches her the robes and they have a hate-love relationship. And yes, in that order, because Thomas Melian treats Susan George like shit in this movie, man. And he, he treats her like shit, all right? He's very vulgar, he's very abusive to her. And it's, it's one of the aspects I don't like about the movie that much, the way he treats her. Because, you know, why, as a woman, would you fall for a guy who treats you like shit, you know? But, uh, I mean, it, it is something different for for a movie like this. It's sort of Bonnie and Clyde, if, if they would have hated each other. <laughs> That's basically it, because they're two bandits uh, in love, and also they hate each other. So it's it's an interesting movie. It's an interesting movie. It's it's entertaining. It has some good comedy in it. Uh, I actually chuckled a couple of times. It don't it doesn't have over the top silly gags like some of the other spaghetti western comedies. Like I said, it's balanced. It's just balanced very well here, in my opinion.
I'll tell you a couple of my favorite scenes in this movie, as always, and also I am uh, going to talk about a couple of negatives. I, I already touched upon one, but I will get into that more more in depth in, in, in a minute. Uh, some of my favorite scenes. I love the scene where um, I know. Not that I love the scene because it does something great. I just I just found it funny. It's a scene in which uh, nothing really happens. Thomas Millian, uh we cut from a different scene to this one. Thomas Millian all of a sudden is eating a big bowl of spaghetti and he's talking about how great spaghetti is. And I was like, in my head, I was like, this is a literal spaghetti western. <laughs> yeah. um, hey, you'll pay five if you want it. It's you my only profit. Pay three for it. You want this one too? Mm. I'll take that one. You couldn't afford it. Well, I thought of spaghetti was a genius. See, let me he must have made it down for $20, honey. I just thought that was a little funny, you know, Thomas Melian's character eating down to eat a big bowl of spaghetti in what we call spaghetti western. That was like very spaghetti of this spaghetti western. <laughs> uh, for real though, one, one scene that I did really like is where Sonny and Jet, they have finally decided to team up and they are now being notorious outlaws. But nobody has a picture of them, so every wanted poster has been printed. That is being printed doesn't have their picture on it. so thomas million goes to one of the guys who is uh putting together the uh the bounty posters the you know the uh one and dead or alive posters and uh he he, he holds the guy gun but he's like you know why, why don't you have my picture well sir we don't have one well take my picture and then uh, you know he and uh susan george pose for a picture together that's going to be on the wanted posters um i just thought that was a very uh good scene um there was some physical comedy in there, you know. First, he wants to take a picture only of Susan George, and she's kind of holding the rifle in a way that he found stupid. He's like, hold that rifle right. Uh, I, I, I thought that was a funny scene. Uh, that, that was one of the scenes that had me chuckling quite a bit, actually. Uh, I thought that was a, I thought that was a good scene. I, I like the, uh, the final shootout, even though I have problems with it. But I like the moment where Thomas Millian lets loose on a machine gun. It's just too bad that it jams a few seconds after. But, you know, of course, machine gun in a Western, and particularly in a spaghetti Western by Sergio Cabucci, is always going to remind you, of course, of uh, Django. So I had a little Django flashback there when Thomas Millian uh, was letting loose on a machine gun. Uh, like I said, just too bad that it jams a couple of seconds after. And... Uh, yeah, let's get into a couple of the uh, of the negatives in this movie because there are still a few uh, that I found. I actually took notes during this uh, viewing of, of, of the movie, which I'm reading off of a little bit. So if you see me looking over there, that's what I'm reading. Um, well, yeah, one of the negatives, animals are being treated in a weird way in this movie. And obviously, animal abuse and animal uh, cruelty... Uh, it's not a thing that is uncommon in old movies like these, um, especially Italian movies. But there's a scene early on in the movie, Thomas Melian has, has a little pig with him. You know, a little, I think it's a baby pig. Uh, uh, and when he arrives in his town and he gives the guy the pig, he just throws it at him. And it's the real life pig, it's not a puppet or anything. Uh, the pig is being, ah, you know, he's being turned around and stuff. I thought they sort of mishandled uh, the pig. I was like, mm, uh, I'm not too sure about that. And uh, there's a scene later on where Millian ha encounters a cow and he starts uh, drinking milk from the cow. But normally where you would, you know, actually milk the cow, he just goes underneath the cow and sticks the, uh, the teat. Is that what you call it? In his mouth. I, I just thought it was a weird treatment for animals in this movie. I mean, obviously, you're going to get in these spaghetti versions, horses falling over, and you're going to be like, I'm pretty sure the horse felt that. You know, you can train a horse all you want. If they have to take a fall and they do a few rolls and stuff, they're still going to be a bit hurt. But, uh, yeah, for Westerns, that is, uh, you know, for, especially for old Westerns, I'm not, I'm not approving of it in any way, shape, or form, but for old Westerns, it is something to be expected that you see in these movies. It's just uh, a part of it. Um... Like I said, nowadays you're not you're not gonna see stuff like that anymore. But uh, yeah, so there, there was some weird treatment of animals in this movie, which I'm not a fan of because I, I I am of course a animal lover. You know, I have uh, uh, three cats in my house. I have a dog as well. Uh, they get along fine, by the way. So 
Um, so, you know, I, I, I like animals, so I, I don't like seeing them in movies, mystery and stuff, even though for old movies, I can, you know, I, I can see it, it is a part of the, a part of the past, you know, it's part of that era, but you know, it's, it's still always a bit, um, unnerving, uh, uh, sort of hard to watch and, and not, not really hard to watch, but it's, uh, it makes me cringe. It makes me cringe. All right. Um, Another negative, the relationship between Millian and George, like I said, a, a hate-love relationship. Usually you would say a love-hate. No, hate comes first in this relationship, all right? There are moments where they genuinely have feelings towards each other and stuff, but few and far between. Uh, Millian is really being a dick to her. Um, and it's just something uh, in, in this era, especially now in the Me Too era, this movie would not play well at all. <laughs> all right, no way this movie would play uh, well uh, in this era but uh, again it's a it's a part of the era it's part of that uh, time period you know all right so there's also the ending i thought was a bit disappointing it was a bit abrupt um eduardo Fiardo is in this he's sort of this rich guy uh thomas melian steals his wife and then uh, Fiardo of course gets pissing and thinking like oh cool it's gonna be melian against uh Fiardo. In the finale but then uh, it doesn't turn out that way Foyardo is actually very wasted in this movie in my opinion this might be the only movie I've seen where Foyardo is truly wasted it's, he's just there you know I always say he brings his a-game yeah he does bring his a-game but if he has nothing to do you know you know his a-game just doesn't uh, come to fr 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 fruition fruition <laughs> there's just nothing there for him um, same could be said a bit for Savalas but I think Tyler Savalas still has enough to do in a movie uh, to make him a, sort of a highlight of it um, Yeah After the point where and of course this is a spoiler review So if you don't want spoilers, you should probably not watch this review You just have been warned because I'm gonna give a little uh, mild spoilers uh, So you have been warned final warning um, But yeah after Savalas his character Don Franciscus gets uh, blinded you know, he's, he's blind for the last uh, 30 minutes or so of the movie. Um, yeah, he doesn't, from that point on, he has pretty much nothing to do. He's just there, uh, it's just a couple of scenes. And the way his character ends, this is a massive spoiler. Really, absolutely final warning. The way his character goes out in the movie, it's just pathetic. It's a, it's a pathetic uh, finale. That's. The weakest point in the movie is the finale and the ending, in my opinion. Thomas Melian had, has been trapped in this big explosion. And Savalas did do, you know, he, he exploded this uh, building that, sort of like this little tower where Melian was in. Savalas exploded that. And then there's a little confrontation between them. Uh, but of course, because Savalas is blind, you know, he, he just doesn't know, you know, he, he can't get his hands on Melian. Susan George rescues him. And then she's just like, I don't want nothing to do with you anymore. I don't want anything to do with you anymore. And then Millian goes after her. So Valas is left there by, his, by himself on the ground. He's laying down. He gets up. He has a grenade with him. Which, by the way, did they have grenades uh, back then? Uh, I don't know the time period in which this is set. If this is the late 1800s or, or if this is the 1870s, 1880s. I don't know. Uh, or maybe this is like the early 1900s. Uh, but I doubt that they that they had grenades. I mean, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But anyway, he has a grenade. He pulls the pin out. He wants to throw it. Of course, because he's blind, he doesn't notice this big fucking wall against him, which he's leaning on too. So, and so when he throws it, he wants to, you know, take aim. He bangs his hand against the wall behind him, which again he was leaning against, and then he drops the grenade. He blows himself up. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was uh, very disappointing. Very disappointing. And Millian goes after Susan George. Uh, I, come on, I want you back. I'm sorry. He's, he's, he's apologizing for all the shit <laughs> he sort of put her through. Uh, she's like, I don't want anything to do with you anymore. Just go away. Leave me alone. And then they uh, go past this hill. They go out of frame. And then the last line you hear is by Millian. He says, I love you, you motherfucker. <laughs> Sonny, I need you. Wait for me. Wait for me! I love you, you Okay, it is a funny line to end on, but it's just a very disappointing ending because what happened to the characters? 
uh, what happened to Foyardo because Foyardo rode off. He, he, like I said, he had nothing to do. Um, it's just a very sloppy ending, in my opinion. That's uh, the only thing that really brings it down for me. Thing. Anyway, uh, that was my uh, pseudo in depth uh, short review of uh, Sunny and Jet. And uh, as always, I hope you guys enjoy. I would love to hear your thoughts on this movie for those of you that have seen it. I mean, obviously, people like Carlos and, and, and Donnie, Cinemaniac 77. Uh, and Carlos, by the way, is Eastwood for Life fan, I always forget. <laughs> you guys would have seen this movie. I'd love to hear your thoughts, uh, as always. And even some people that are here from the Spaghetti Western database or from the Spaghetti Western podcast, where I met some people on. Or maybe even my buddy Mike, uh, Dake Films, uh, he might have seen this one. As a, just comment on the movie. I'd love to chat with you about it. What, what, do you have some of the same positives and negatives as I do? It's just always fun to talk about. So. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, stay tuned for the next one, which is going to be number eight in the ranking. We're really moving up. And uh, as always, I am going to announce which one it is. Next week, we'll be taking a look at Sergio Kabuchi's Johnny Oro, aka Ringo, and his Golden Pistol. I will see you guys then. As always, this is 11 Bronson signing off and saying take care and adios till the next one. A fistful of gold, a pair of golden spurs, a golden pistol. This is Ringo, Ringo and his golden pistols.